Hello my friends, welcome to another Cyanate video. In this one we're going to be looking at the final part of the energy changes topic which is chemical cells and fuel cells. Within it we'll talk about how rechargeable and non-rechargeable batteries work as well as how hydrogen fuel cells will work and then a fine little bit on how to evaluate all of those together. Let's go! probably come across the term cell or battery before and these are just chemical reactions that are happening to provide a potential difference to drive a current and what they are are two different metals in contact with an electrolyte so a solution that has ions and then two different metals which have different positions in the reactivity series generally the further they are away from each other in the reactivity series the better and so having one and another leads to ions moving to both of these electrodes and therefore a transfer of electrons happens giving a potential difference. So one becomes more negative and the other one becomes more positive. As a result you get a potential difference, a negative region and a positive region and therefore a movement of electrons. Simple. A battery though is just more than one cell put together in a series. So in a series, um, in physics you know series circuit is like lamps in a series would be in one long chain together like this um, that is series and a chemical cell put together many of them two or more uh, in series makes a battery now we probably also know that batteries can be non-rechargeable or disposable or rechargeable now in chemistry again we can explain that so non-rechargeable cells stop they stop working when reactants are used up so when the electrolytes been used up or the electrodes are coated in the product that's being formed at that electrode or has been used up completely. A rechargeable cell however is basically a reaction that can be reversed and therefore go back to produce more of the reactants for the uh, potential difference driving reaction and so you may well have come across reversible reactions before they're the ones where you have product uh, reactants reacting together to make a product you have this arrow rather than the standard arrow goes to make it means it's reversible so if we put in electricity to these products we can actually reverse the reaction back again to make more of the reactants so the reaction to the right making the product will create a potential difference if we provide electricity provide a potential difference we can reverse it back again um, allowing us to reuse the the battery wonderful so you may well have seen those they're quite expensive to buy um, but they are reusable you don't just throw them away after a single use whereas non-rechargeable batteries or disposable ones like alkaline batteries the standard type um, we use them we throw them away they go to a landfill we can recycle them but it's costly to do so fuel cells are just like chemical cells but they use a different fuel source so in this case we might use something like hydrogen reacting with oxygen and this fuel is oxidized electrochemically to produce a potential difference. Now oxidation is basically a transfer of electrons and we should know oil rig at this case, at this point. Oil rig just is a way of remembering that oxidation is the loss of electrons, reduction is the gain of electrons. So if the fuel or the hydrogen is being oxidized, it's losing electrons. And we'll get to the half equations in a minute, but you can see this here, hydrogen is going to form ions and therefore it's losing electrons because it's becoming a positive ion. So this hydrogen is losing electrons. They're going off into the circuit. They're going off to um, make a potential difference. Now, that's the basis of a fuel cell. You don't need to know loads about how it works. You might see some diagrams on different websites um, and on Seneca or BBC Bite Size or whatever, but we don't need to know how these actually work. That's all you need to know. The fuel is electro oxidized electrochemically to produce a potential difference. And in this hydrogen fuel cell, that hydrogen is going to end up reacting with, in a separate part on the electrode, uh, the oxygen to produce water. So water is the only product that we're getting here. Electrons go on a fancy loop, but the product is water. So this is a really clean way of producing electricity. And we can use it in cars, we can use it in planes, we can use it in um, loads of things to produce energy um, for cheap. Well, the actual engine is expensive. But yeah, so if you're doing higher tier, we need to know the half equations for what's happening at the electrodes in this hydrogen fuel cell. So overall we have two hydrogen molecules reacting with one oxygen molecule to produce two water molecules. So overall we have two hydrogen molecules produces 
four hydrogen ions as they each lose their electrons and four electrons coming off of those. Remember that hydrogen is in group one, so therefore it needs to lose one electron each, and so that's why we have four electrons for every e for the four hydrogen ions. In the second half equation here, we've got oxygen, which is the main focus, but because we're getting water as a product, we have to include the hydrogen T. So oxygen molecule starting off is going to react with these four hydrogen ions and the four electrons, which have already split apart earlier in the process, and they're all going to combine together to make two H2O. We could focus just on the oxygen and we could say, well, we start off with oxygen and you're going to add to that. Um, well, if you think oxygen is in group six, each oxygen atom needs to gain two electrons to get a full outer shell. So we have two oxygen atoms. Therefore, we need a total of four electrons to give us our two O2 minus. So again, we've got two oxygen atoms, each one needs to gain two electrons so in total we need four electrons and that gives us our O2 minus but two of those because that's what we started off with two. So it's really worth learning those half equations uh, you do need to know those for the higher tier in separate science. And the final section in this topic is how to evaluate these different type of cells. So Evaluation always means gives the advantages and the disadvantages and give a conclusion. Always give a conclusion. Every single time. As soon as you see that word evaluate, what have you got to do? That's right. You've got to conclude it. So that just means you say, I think that this is best because blah, blah, blah. Whatever you've said and back up your answer with. So hydrogen fuel cells are really good because water is a product. It's, it's the only product. It's clean. The actual engine is pretty small. It's easy to maintain. If you think compared to a petrol or a diesel engine that has combustion reactions, uh, you've got moving pistons, you've got an exhaust to collect the toxic gases that are coming off of it. Uh, compared to that, it's really simple. You just need your hydrogen, stored hydrogen, you need an air intake, you need somewhere to get rid of the, the water at the end. Simple. It is so expensive. At the moment, our technology is expensive in the form of the fuel cells. Hopefully we'll get cheaper over time as things do. Um, and also we, we need to store flammable gas here. So hydrogen is a very flammable gas. You think of the Hindenburg. It is, it is quite expensive and dangerous to store. Uh, so the, the source isn't expensive, but it, it's difficult to store. Um, so that's something to consider. You know, if you're going to go on a plane with it, how likely is it to catch on fire well i mean you've got petrol and diesel in these things like equally pretty flammable themselves um but it is a consideration non-rechargeable batteries the disposable ones they are cheap but they are disposable so they go to a landfill we can recycle them if you take them to a special recycling center um or there's recycling boxes and places around but that recycling is expensive so it's not really commonly done Rechargeable cells, they are recyclable, easily done. You stick it in a little machine at home um, or wherever. I mean, your phones have recyclable batteries, not recyclable, rechargeable batteries. Um, so we can recycle their use. And that makes them really useful. Imagine you had to throw away a disposable battery in your phone every day. I mean, how much, how many batteries would you get through? It'd be ridiculous. The amount you're contributing to landfills with throwing away your battery every day. Um, but these rechargeable batteries are more expensive than disposables. It's logical. Makes sense, right? Um, so yeah, if you've made use of this video and it's been really helpful, do like it. Make sure that other people can make use of it and find it useful too. Uh, if you have any questions or queries, put them in the comment below and do subscribe for more videos.